There is an issue with Job Centre Plus. I mean, it is in itself as an organisation, um, well, it's not, I would say it's not fit for purpose. Others would say that it certainly has flaws. And that is that there is, it's a box ticking culture there. It's about moving numbers around and not actually dealing with people as individuals, but as numbers. It, if they're not uh, claiming benefit or they have their benefit reduced, it helps the government. It makes it look like there are less people unemployed. So this is, this is all about numbers, isn't it? It's not really about mobilising a generation? Well, well, indeed, Jim. So long as someone is in one of these, these um, government programmes, whether it's the work programme or something else, then they don't qualify as unemployed. Um, and anyone who has been sanctioned, if they've lost their benefit um, for a month, then they don't appear on the unemployment statistics either. Um, one of the, interestingly enough, we were just taking evidence this morning from employers about how well Job Centre Plus um, is doing. And the main criticism um, that they were um, laying at the door of, of Job Centre Plus was that the, the way that they calculated their success actually wasn't success at all. Now, they calculate their success by what's called an off-benefit flow. In other words, if somebody comes off-benefit, therefore that's a, that's a good thing. And yes. obviously it sounds as though it's a good thing. Yes. But if they're only in, in work for a week, then that counts as they're off-benefit. Um, the fact that they're back on the, the, the benefit in a week or in, in, in a month's time doesn't, isn't, isn't a negative. It isn't taken away from them. So, so it actually um, makes the Job Centre Plus appear more active and, and performing better if they get lots of people into short-term work placements because each time they come off benefit and go into the short-term work placement, that counts as another, um, a, another person. That but it's been like this for work. years, and It's been like this for years. Even under Labour it was like this. And in fact, the, the Job Centre, I, I read their annual report for last year, they don't uh, publish details on how many people they found work for, which you would think if they're called a mm. Job Centre, they just award themselves points. It's all based on a point system, which is a cover for, for, d for detail. Is it any wonder that the court rule today that the government programs are so confusing it's all designed to confuse people so we can't hold anybody to account um well i think it, it does confuse people it certainly confu confuses those who are seeking work and um, it's also possible for some people never to quite get onto any of these programs because they perhaps find work again for a month and then are out of work but they go back the clock goes right back to the beginning again so they never are continuously out of work, say, for a year, so never get onto the work programme. Um, they're just in this, this very short term, continually in and out of work. And of course, that's very confusing in terms of their benefit entitlement. Um, and it, it also doesn't give any stability and it's not long lasting. I think the key and what all governments should be aiming for if we're going to get people back to work, it has to be long term sustained work that pays a decent wage. And at the moment, we're not necessarily achieving that. We're managing to manipulate the figures, but we're not actually helping the individuals who are there to be helped. Now, as chair of the Work and Pension Select Committee, will you be holding any of these work programme providers to account over their fraudulent activities? I mean, it is undoubted, and I'm only going based upon people that have called this programme and have been and, and have told me directly, without any uh, politics or bureaucracy in the way, that they are being taken on a on a uh, a ride by these organisations who do nothing for them and are paid handsomely by the taxpayer, despite it being supported supposedly paid by results, which is not true at all. Well, in fact, um, our, our last report was exactly into the, the, the workings of the work programme, and we held a debate um, just two weeks ago in, um, in the House of Commons on the particular issue about the failings of the work programme. Um, the payment by results system isn't particularly working because uh, it's much easier for these, work, these um, employment providers, the, the people who are the con contracted by the government to get people into work. It's much easier for them to, to get those who are closest to the labour market into work and get that fee, even though it might be smaller than getting someone who's more difficult into work, it's still um, a better deal for for them to, to, to work on those who are the easiest to, to place. And it's called creaming and parking. And what we found was that the parking was still going on. If someone um, perhaps has got a very checkered work history, perhaps has other barriers to work, such as homelessness or substance abuse um, or indeed a disability, 
then um, the amount of money on offer, the payment by results um, part of the, the work programme, isn't really de- delivering for them. They were meant to be, to horrible words, segmented into different um, groups of people, and those who were most difficult to reach were meant to get a differentiated payment. In other words, they get more money for getting them into work. But that really hasn't worked in practice. It was... We had hoped it would work, and when we looked at it a few years ago when the government was proposing it, we thought that this might be the one thing that would make a difference, but actually in reality it hasn't.